Hello and welcome to this week's angling blog. Today you join me on the bank of the river and we're in search of pike. And as you can see by my breath, we've had an overnight frost and what a beautiful morning it is to be on the river. The, the surface of the river is just like glass. There's fish topping just all the way along the stretch. And I've set myself just up on the edge of, that, of the topping. So I'm on the edge of the shoal. Got a few fish topping above me. Quite a few topping below me. And I've just set up just on the edge. Um, as the day goes on, I might, knowing that them fish are there, work my way through the shoal. Um, at this time of year with the cold, they won't really move far. So I imagine that shoal will stay there most of the day. It's a, as I say, a lovely morning to be on the bank. It's just everything that the piking is all about. You've got the reflections on the still water, the white grass and that nip in the air. And it certainly warranted the thermals to be out for the first time this season. Most definitely going to need them today. It's going to be a clear day, so whether that sun will warm things up and we'll get a complete contrast in the day will remain to be seen. But for now, I'm just going to sit back, get the kettle on, and hopefully, we'll get a run. Right, so that's the heaven prepared. And um, for those that are new, um, I do get questions asking how you hook a bait. The top hook, right as high up as you can, and you want to go through the root. There's a bone that goes right through the fish. I don't know if you can see it there, you probably can't. But there's a bone, a spine that goes right through. And right in the root is where the most bones will meet. And you good anchor point and make sure it comes through the other side. And then I pull the hook as tight as I can so it grips over into the side of the bait. And like I say, a bait that was probably that long. Leave a bit at the bottom. The more you leave, the more chance you've got that a pike can grab somewhere where there isn't a hook. So sometimes, don't get me wrong, last year... That was the bait, and they were eating it that fast that your hooks, you know, I caught most of the fish. But sometimes when you're fishing a whole bait, they can grab it there. And this year, definitely smaller baits have been more productive. So let's get it out and see if there's an Esox waiting for us. So, my first rod is a, a float ledger heaven. And as you can see there, there's one or two small fish topping around the area. And we come round, there's my ledger rod. And I don't know whether you can see the white on the top of it, showing how cold it is today. And that's going just out to the middle. And that's on a, a skimmer bream. So I must have picked the wrong wig to get my hair cut and shaved the beard. I would have needed that this weekend, most certainly. There is a nip in the air. And while we're talking about the cold, um, many of you that have followed the written blog will know that I have been doing the blog for a number of years and fished all year round for a number of years. And um, one thing the cold can do is kill, kill a venue. That first sharp frost, it, it takes a lot to cool the water and a lot to heat it up. So the, the temperature of the water might not have changed dramatically but it's just that harshness of that first frost can can kill a venue certainly on a canal it can and um, there's a lot of fish topping on here today so i am hopeful that the pike are active as well but if you are fishing a venue just bear it in mind that that first frost um can have different results on your venue you can go out before it and catch quite well the fish seem to sense the cold is coming but the first day after the frost can be very indifferent so if you go out there and you think conditions are perfect like they are today sometimes your venue doesn't react that well to it so sometimes picking the right venue can be the right can be the difference between catching and not when you get to learn them but today I would think going the canal would be a huge risk today
Right, so just going to do a bit of unhooking of the pike. You can see everything ready forceps, bolt cutters, and pliers. So let's get the pike on the mat, give it a bit of a wet down first, and then let's see what we've got. Find out where your hooks are. So you can see there, I don't know if you can see it on the GoPro, it's got one in its corner of its mouth which isn't going to be too bad but the one on the gill really gentle with get that out of its mouth and out the way like that and this one here so just pull that one to loosen it that's where you want to hook them right in the scissors and there we go, nice and gently, unhooked. Right, and there we go, just give it a quick weigh. Just over seven pound, and a lovely, lovely pike to start the day on a cold, crisp morning. And like I said, getting your venues right, spending time on your venues and doing a number of years on your venue, you get to learn which ones to pick for the conditions that you're faced with. And I knew that coming here today, I'd had bites on the first frost before, so I knew I was in with a chance. And we've got one. And it might be the only one we get today, with it being such a drastic change in weather, but at least it's staved off the plank. Let's get her back. She is rested in the net. Time to go back. Pike number two, really quick succession. Uh, literally, the, the rod was in the water about 20 seconds. And as you can see there, you can see the deformation on its face. Proper pike only a mother pike could love. But who cares? It's a second pike of the day. And on a cold, frosty October morning it's a result the rod's back out and fingers crossed as my daughter drives me mad with if that's baby shark let's hope grandma shark is about as well so let's get her back right so this pike's had a very good rest just been speaking to a guy who watches the blog and I must say, whenever I bump into anyone on the bank, it's always fantastic to see you guys who watch it and have a good chat. And we had a nice little chat about all things roach and all things pike. And this guy was just resting in the net. So let's get him back. You're going to swim into the bank. Go on, matey. There we go. Right in the edge. So, the fine margins of piking. Just picked the rod up to recast it, and as I picked it up, I felt it tug. <laughs> and this pike must have only been seconds in between it picking up the bait, but as soon as I felt the resistance, set the hooks um, we've got pike number three about to come to the bank and say just missed the other rod so let's get him in looks like he's blind in one eye and have a look at him right so this part of the video uh, people are really liking who are new to piking so unhooking the pike, a really easy one this one. You can see a quick check to make sure that there's nothing in its mouth. 
any tackle from anybody else and this is right in the scissors and just tease the hooks out he wasn't coming off just be gentle and there we go and take your time and you're always going to get awkward ones and there we go just take your time and there's you can see he's blinding one eye there a lovely pike right so really quickly just under eight pound uh blinding this eye and just shows uh how much these creatures can survive really um blinding one eye still feeding and the fine lines eh? just pick the rod up and as i did i felt a tug didn't let it run just set the hooks and took a chance and sometimes it pays off and she was hooked okay so It'll be really quick, uh, the rest of the video might just be shots of the pike and um, my phone is on about 30% so going to be quick vlogs from now on in and we'll see what we'll get but yeah, take it on a, um, a skimmer on the ledger rig Time for that celebratory brew Rod's back out and sit back, it's one of them sessions where we had a couple of pike just sit back and enjoy not being in work so the two baits doing the business today skimmer bream and definitely herring jack we've had three runs so far on the herring as I say one of them come off and I've had that one that you've just seen there on the skimmer as I say I'm not going to go over the rigs these pike blogs are in a playlist now and I'll put a link to the playlist at the top of the screen and it goes over all the rigs that I use in there so if you watch them videos you'll see the rigs that I use um, it's pointless for me, me repeating myself on every video so if you want to see the rigs that I'm using today the float ledger and the ledger rig are both in that playlist This feels a, a much better fish. Oh yeah, a lovely fish. As I said on the other videos, when your arm aches, it's a sign of a better one. And this is a much better fish. <clears throat> oh yeah. What's in? Nice fish this. Not one we want to come off. That's for sure. And steer him away from that other rod. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That is a serious pike. That is a serious, serious pike. Let's get the scales out and have a look at it. And once in a while, there's something special in the net. Let's take a look. Good 
the moment. She's 19 pound, nine ounces. And one of the nicest pike I have ever caught. Look at the colors on that and the head on it. A lovely, lovely fish. And as you see on the video there, just tense it up. Plenty, plenty of head shaking. And what a fish. What an absolutely clonking fish. 19 pound, nine ounces. I've got hardly any battery left and I don't care. That is blog time. Absolutely made up. Over the moon. Let's get a couple of photos and get her back. 19 pound, nine ounces. What a fish. Some fish are just worth lying on the ground for and wasting the rest of your battery on and there she goes and people say fishing's expensive these things if you're a parent lol dolls you'll know all about them but my little girl has put this in my box since the start of the season and boy has he come up trumps today thank you very much abs Right, so we're in trouble now because we're on about 10% battery, so we might end up blogging on the GoPro. Uh, so, yeah, hot and bothered, but buzzing, absolutely buzzing. Kettle's on for the brew. I don't take sugar, but it's going to taste sweet. Really is going to taste sweet. £19.9 nine ounces. Was convinced it was over 20. It was a nice fish. And yeah absolutely made up we'll have this cup of coffee and chill out it just shows doesn't it put the timing on the waters you know when you see people catching on facebook and asking questions where people are fishing if you go out there learn your waters and in the morning when you open the door you can make the right choice at where to go you know it was a hard frost this morning i'd have struggled on the canal because I've been there and, and done the hard days on there and learnt it. Thought come the river because I have a chance of a fish. Just shows, doesn't it? Gonna sit back and enjoy this brew. Right, so just into another one. Uh, another small one. And amazing with that big one about how many small pipe we've actually had. Number in the area, what's this pike number? Number five, is it? Super quick, I can see 3% battery on my phone, just over eight pound, absolutely torn off. A lovely fight. I think it's pike number five, and how good are them days where you forget how many you've caught? I'm sure it's pike number five, just over eight pound. Let's get it back. Right. So as you can probably tell, we're not on the same session. It's the morning of the Wednesday after, and we're back out on the bank. But, yeah, what a day. Uh, Jack's all morning, as you've seen, and it, it was manic, it was casting in, and sometimes there was only, between bite one and two, I think, there was only about five minutes. To, I unhooked the pipe, put the rod back out, and when I let it gone, the pike was off again. So quite quick bites. Um, that fish, what can I say? Uh, I have a habit, last year I caught a 19 pound pike in October and got quite a habit of catching them pike in October. Um, but for me, it's not necessarily about the size of the pike. Some pike live long in the memory and that one over the last couple of days has been firmly in my memory the colours along its flanks it's when you when it's on the bank you can admire it but when you get home and look back at the pictures and the videos you know yourself you get to see what lovely markings that pike had and yeah one of the fish that there's not many fish that stick out in the memory as being really nice fish that you you know you remember for years and years but I think that one will certainly go into that category uh, 
a fantastic session on the bank. Um, they're them red letter days that come along, aren't they? And you've got to enjoy them because over the next couple of months, it's only the end of October, and um, we're just about to move into November. And them sessions will be the ones that will get you through the hard sessions to come. The cold's coming and the rain is coming. And when the rain comes, certain venues colour up really bad and certain venues go really clear. Um, rain can do that to venues. It can either clear them or it can make them go uh, chocolatey and both present really hard fishing for the pike. So there are harder times to come. I'm going to thoroughly enjoy um, this session that you've just seen now. And all that remains is to say thank you very much, lads, for and ladies who watch. Um, it's great to read all the comments on the videos. And yeah, thank you very much. Tight lines in your own fishing. And let's just see what this session holds. And hopefully we'll have another blog coming along shortly. Tight lines, and I'll catch you all next time.